A common way of creating web layouts is to use a tag called a division. A division is an area of a page that you can style using CSS in order to create perhaps columns or boxes or certain rectangular shaped areas of content on the page. So for example, in our existing HTML, what I might do is move down below our, this is the link to Apple, and write in a division. In that division, I might place a paragraph saying, here is another paragraph, close that paragraph and also close the division. So if I were to indent that properly, it would perhaps look like that. So that division, when seen in design view, previews by showing you the outline of it. So a division will scale to the width of whatever uh, it's inside and currently it's just inside the body and it doesn't have any styling applied to it so it doesn't really know how to behave other than to fit the width of whatever it's in. So what we can do is write a rule for that division. So because that's the name of the tag we could just write a style rule that said div but the problem with that is we might want to have several divisions so if we just select over that and paste another one we now have two of those divisions but how can we tell those two apart well the crucial thing there is we might want to have one wide column and one narrow column so for that reason we'd normally give an ID to the uh, opening tag of any particular division so we might call this one wide and this one narrow So then I'd write a rule in my CSS, and remember this is for an ID, so we start with a hash symbol, so we'd say wide, and we'd say give it a width of let's say 600 pixels, and I'll write a rule for my narrow, and give that a width of 300 pixels. So then when I look, back at my design view you can see that I've got 600 and 300 for those two things. So what if I wanted them to be next to each other? Well by default this doesn't happen in HTML because when HTML was originally devised uh, it was just for paragraphs of text and image based content that would go down the page. There wasn't any divisions and there weren't any kind of structural elements that allowed layout like we're familiar with in print layout or magazines. So because of that, we had to uh, create something called uh, float, which will allow elements to sit next to each other on the page. So what we do in order to ensure that that works for both of those elements is to put in float and give it a direction. So we might say float left for that and float left for the other. That way they're both heading towards the left hand side of the page and if we change our design view to full screen you can see that there's now enough room for those to sit next to each other within that preview so in my split view you can see at the bottom it's operating currently at a viewable size of 881 so that doesn't equal 900 that that 600 and 300 equaled but if I change my design view there as if I was dragging out a browser window you can see that they sit next to each other so that's what a float is doing for us now there's a couple of other things that are worth mentioning at this point that we can do to elements like this one of them is to uh, give padding now padding will add to the overall size of a box so uh, we might give padding of 10 pixels now padding is space inside of an element so if I put in 10px there, save and switch back. When I click on the edge there, it's previewing the padding that I've got. It's basically pushing that element away. Now the paragraph has got its own spacing and that's why there's a bit of distance away from the top, different to the bottom there. So that's padding, but what if I wanted to create space outside of the box? That's where I'd use something called margin. I'll put in 10px there. So that's created now 10 around the outside and you can see it's pushed it away from the left hand side and also it's pushing the other box away to the right. So there's now a gap. So 
that's a basic kind of use of float, margins and padding and using divisions to lay out areas of content on the page. So I could now continue with that and carry on writing. Okay, so that would then become a column and likewise in here I could write more stuff too. Two. Um, okay, so that's basic floats, margins, padding and divisions for layout. Next thing we'll do is look at the new HTML5 structure tags which are similar to divisions um, but a little bit simpler to write.